Hi, and welcome to another edition of the Tao of Aromatica. I'm here with Karen Kane, our resident tea blender, and we're here to talk today about... Small batch blending. Small batch blending. So what's the difference between small batch blending and large batch blending? Scale. Okay, so that's we, obvious. Not so much. <laughs> okay. Well, you, I'll let you decide. Okay. We represent a German blending company on the West Coast. Um, they have a pyramid tea bag division operating out of Georgia. They run one machine 24 hours a day, three shifts, seven days a week for one customer. Oh my God. That's, That's a lot of tea. That's large batch That's blending. That's a lot of tea, yeah. We don't do that. Okay. So what we do is we make blends for the store, blends for restaurants, blends for special occasions, and we scale it to our customer. Okay, well let's talk a little bit about how you got started. How did you get started? How long have you been doing this? We've been doing this for about 10 years, and what happened was we had asked about being able to blend, and we were told consistently, you can't, you can't, you can't. Mm -hmm. And then we went to a tea show, and I was asking if someone had a replacement for a tea that ha was no longer available to us. And th there was a gentleman who said, well, let's see if we can make it. And he sort of snapped his fingers and minions rose and did his beck and call. At the end of the day, his tea wasn't very good, but when we got home, we were looking through his catalog and realized that the guy on the back page of the catalog was the same fella who told us, do it yourself and you'll have something unique. And he runs a multi, multi-billion dollar, multi-continent <laughs> tea company, so, why, so I guess gonna, he knows, Why right? are you going to argue with him? Yeah, yep. I guess that makes sense. If Jerry said, I'm going with it. I'm with Jerry. Yep. So we do small batch blending because somebody said, yeah, you can. Well, it takes a lot of guts to take that first step forward, though, because uh, you don't know what it's, how it's going to turn out. And, and how did it turn out? What, what was your first batch? Our very first batch was what you sampled on the last episode. So it's Oh, that was, that was amazing. What was that called again? So that's Appledorns. Apple and Dorns, yeah. years ago, there was a company uh, on Mill Street called Appledorns, and it was a bakery cafe. The baker there was a wonderful uh, baker, but she had supermarket tea, which didn't do very well for, um, didn't do very well at all for it that. It sits for 18 of, months yeah. on average. Yeah. We know that. From we know that. Yeah. So we, uh, what we did was think about what it would take to have something that would really represent good baking. And so we added to a black tea, vanilla, ginger and cinnamon. Oh yeah, who doesn't like those flavors? Right, and so the pairing with wonderful desserts became much easier when she had a good tea and you've tasted it, you know how that went. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, um, you're obviously doing a lot of blending yep. uh, and, and for the store, uh, do you do uh, any specific blending for special occasions or for special customers? We do. Um, we have places like the Bookman downtown, we do their house. Blends. Oh, really? Bookman blend is something that we produce. Um, and what's in the Bookman blend? That's proprietary. I okay, I sir. <laughs> yes, thank you. It's, a, it's an interesting mix because some of the places that we blend for are very interested in collaborative efforts and mm -hmm. others want it to be proprietary. Yeah, no, that's great. I sort of woke up one day because one of the proprietary blends for a tea house in uh, Vancouver, we were selling hundreds of pounds to them a year. And I didn't have it on my shelf, and I thought, well, that's kind of silly. Obviously, it's a good tea. Mm -hmm. So we changed up the recipe a little bit, and that is actually our Black Magic Mint is one that we do similar for mm -hmm. someone in Vancouver. So we blend for Little White House uh, in Fort Langley. Oftentimes, whether it's a restaurant that takes our teas or a tea that we produce for a restaurant and sales, they end up getting rid of any competitors' teas in their institution. So we've seen places who report to us, a coffee shop locally, who when they went to our teas and they got serious about their teas, they outsold coffee for a couple of months in a row a, in a coffee shop. A so, tea outsold coffee. Mm -hmm. now, so we're pretty amazing. pleased about that. Yeah, that's wild. What makes a great blend? Great blend, you have to start with a profile. So I, sometimes, you know, you'll start with an inspiration, if you will, where you have an idea, you think this would go really well mm -hmm. with this. Other times it'll be someone asks for something. So I don't even know where Lumbee is, but a fellow who owned a, a shop up there said, could you make me a vanilla chamomile tea? There's no way you can take 
vanilla beans and chamomile and come out with a tea, but we were able to put that in a rooibos base that brought those two profiles together and that's become a, a very successful blend for us. Excellent, mm -hmm. excellent. So now, um, we, we got these black tins here and uh, I, I have a feeling they're here for a purpose. They weren't here before. What are they for? One of the very um, satisfying things for us is when someone asks us for something special, we do it for them. And that's how we got started in functional teas. So we have teas that are intended to have a health benefit and we call them their, our functional line. So we have Happy Throat and we have Tummy Tamer and we have Cold Buster. And those ingredients were specifically chosen to help someone who's fighting a cold or they has serve a function. function. That That's totally it. makes sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That makes sense. Yep. And how are the, how do those do? Like, uh, are they popular teas? They're tremendously popular teas. Um, I just go on for hours about people coming in and telling us story after story about how they've been better off um, for having the use of functional teas. Just last weekend, there was a lady coming in, and she is headed off on their lifetime vacation. It's the bucket list one that they're going to do, and she's feeling crummy. I need to get over this before my vacation starts. I need some happy throat. So I got a little tickle in my throat right now, maybe a cold coming on. Uh, is happy throat what you would recommend? And, and unless it's proprietary, can you tell me what, what it is about happy throat that... Uh Happy Throat's ours. There's nothing. I mean, it's proprietary to us. But it started when Kim was a on the board of directors for this Chilliwack Symphony, mm -hmm. and realized that some of the performers got really, really stretched throats by all the performances when they were doing night after night. So we did some research, and he came up with Happy Throat, looking for ingredients that would ease the discomfort and help people. And that's been around for years now. We have Supreme Court judges who come in to do the their um, happy throat because they read long judgments. We have people in the music industry who do it. You, um, Lori from Spider Lodge sends other vocalists here all the time for happy wow. throat. And my favorite story is about um, Six Gun Romeo, which is a rockabilly band, and they, uh, the lead singer drinks that on stage. But of course, it can't be a pinkies up when it's that kind of a, an audience. Because he's a rock star. Yeah. So he ha his wife makes it for him cold, and it goes in a Jack Daniels bottle, so it's uber cool on stage. Are you kidding? I'm he's not. He's sitting there swinging a... Happy throat. Happy throat. Yep. Wow. Sorry to blow it. Yeah. <laughs> it's all out there now. The happy throat makes Six Gun Romeo a happy guy. Mm -hmm. That's fantastic. Um, now, there's that's a special blend. Do you uh, do you have any other special blends that you're working on recently, uh, or or something that you're most proud of? Recently, we did a, a wedding tea for wedding favors for a couple who are getting married in October. Mm -hmm. They originally wanted something that would be a, a combination of their two favorite blends. That right. turned out to be pretty incompatible. Oh. And they said, we give you carte blanche because if this wedding is going to work, um, clearly it's not going to be based on our taste in tea. Well, maybe the writing was on the wall. Did everything no, work out? they will be fine. They'll be fine? Okay. Yep. So good. we actually built a blend that I'm sure is going to become something we put on the shelves. And and it will be a very good seller because um, it's called Bliss. Oh, it's called Bliss? Bliss. Isn't that wonderful? <laughs> Bliss tea. So um, I, I've loved everything that we talked about in terms of, uh, of blending today. It, it makes a little bit more sense to me uh, as to why there's so many teas behind us. Um, and I encourage you that if you've got questions uh, about certain blends or, or maybe even if you want to talk to Karen or Kim about certain uh, ingredients that you might like blended in a tea, come down to the store and, and talk to them and, and maybe they may have already have it or maybe they'll do something creative for you. Um, but what I'd like to do now is, you got it, you got it already. I wanna taste this tea. Which one is this one? So this is cherry cardamom. It's an organic cherry blend and we hand grind cardamom to give it a freshness and a spiciness that just balances out Beautiful. the cherry. Now, ah. cardamom, a hint of um, uh, chai. Is that in chai? Yes. Yeah? A little bit. Of, oh. So you can smell that? Yeah, I can smell that. Mmm. Oh, that's a wonderful tea. Um, thank you, Karen. And thank you to our viewers uh, for watching this episode. Um, stay tuned uh, for... Cooking with Tea. Cooking with Tea, which is our next episode in the series. Thank you for coming. Thank Cheers. you. Cheers. Cheers.